About 30 years ago, I was hired to replace some, the front and, come on. Just, okay, God, help me. About 30 years ago, I was hired to replace the front and back door of a house. And in order for a door to operate correctly, it has to be plumb so that when it opens, the front end of the door doesn't hit a piece on the ground. The problem was this plumb door has to go in like this. And what do you do when the wall of a house is cockeyed like this? If you put the door in like this, when it opens, it's going to hit the floor and the door is only going to open maybe a foot to 18 inches. Took a little bit of finagling, but I did figure out a way to create a frame that held the door and let it open straight. And this all is an illustration of the fact that we're going to be talking about God being righteous. And one of the words in the New Testament, it's not translated righteous, it's translated upright most often, but it's a word meaning to be plumb or straight. But there is a related idea in the background of the Hebrew word tzedek, which is the word that is translated righteous in different forms of it, righteousness and such. And it is an idea that it's something that conforms to a standard, a standard that is right and works. And God is righteous. And there is some standard by which God, God operates. And I'm just going to say right out the gate, that standard is God himself. But his nature is righteous. There's not an external standard telling God what he has to do. God himself is the standard of righteousness. And it demonstrates it again and again, and I hope over the next few days to give us some good illustrations of God's righteousness. I'm Pastor Tim Holsher, and we're talking about who is God. And as we're, I already have said, we're going to be talking about God's righteousness. And in the book of Deuteronomy, in chapter 32, this is right towards the very end of Moses's life. And as Moses is talking to the sons of Israel as they're getting ready to enter the land and he is, well, preparing the fact that he's going to die, whether he understands that fully at this point or not. He is concerned for them. He's concerned about what they're not capable of doing. And he says in verse 3, For I proclaim the name of the Lord, ascribe greatness to our God, the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are just, that word just, and this is important, this word just means that he does judgment. He carries out judgment properly. A God of faithfulness and without injustice or twistedness or perversity, righteous and upright, and there's our two words, righteous and upright is he. Those two words that indicate the fact that he does that which is right and he's plumb and he's level. He's straight, and yet that is also part of the background behind this word tzedek. God is righteous and God is upright. In qualities we should never pass by. And I want to look at one example of how what this looks like, how we might appreciate and understand this. In order to do so, we need to kind of take a look at the wicked and this is from Psalm 37 and verse 14. And I would encourage you to read, pick up your Bible today and read through this whole psalm. And keep in mind when you're reading through this that the things that, that are stated in here are from the perspective of a person who is living under the Mosaic Law and the promises that God made to them under the Mosaic Law. And some of those promises do not apply to you and I because they're not promises that God has made to us. But in this context, verse 14, it says, The wicked have drawn the sword and bent the bow. Both of those are, they're getting ready to fight, but they're getting ready to fight in a violent way against a vicious enemy? No, to cast down the afflicted. In other words, the people are already down and low, and to the needy. Again, the people that, they're not strong and ready to go out and fight. In other words, the wicked are actually acting in a violent way against the people that really have needs and the people that are low, the people that don't have any of this. To slay those who are upright, there's that word upright, in conduct. They're straight. They're level. They're plumb in their conduct. Their sword will enter their own heart and their bows will be broken because those were the promises that God had made to Israel under the law. 
Better is a little of the righteous, talking about righteous people, than the abundance of many wicked people. Now, to contrast this, I want to go to Psalm 145. And it says, The Lord sustains all who fall and raises up all who are bowed down. Now, keep in mind, God does do things for us as believers, New Testament grace believers, but it is also important to understand that God has not made certain promises to us that sometimes we're accustomed to. It says, The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due time. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Look at that. The needy. Those other people, they're drawing the bow. They're pulling the sword. They are people that are getting ready to take advantage of the people that have needs, the people that are needy, the people that are lowly. God, rather, opens his hand to these people. That opened hand gesture is a hand saying, here it is for you. It's free. I'm not holding it like this going, no, you can't have it. It's like, have it. Enjoy it. The Lord is righteous in all his ways and kind in all his deeds. Verse 18, the Lord is near to all who call upon him and all who call upon him in truth. But this idea back there, the Lord is righteous in all his ways. And that still remains true. He may not have made promises to you and I that he made to Israel under the law, But he is still righteous in all his ways. And he is still kind towards us. And I I personally, by my testimony, have to say, and God does take care of me. He hasn't made me rich by the standards of our country. But I would say compared to most of the world, I would say I'm rich. He takes care of me well. And I'm not a prosperity person. And I'm not a person that's rolling in dough. Nothing like that. But I'm just saying God really has been very generous. And and in that, we stop and think about those things and say, you know, even though God hasn't promised that to me, I have no promise in the Bible that God says, hey, I'm going to make sure that everything's sweet for you. You do this, you can always drive a great car, you can have a great house, and on and on and on and all that other nonsense. That's unrighteous when people are saying that today. The Apostle Paul said in Philippians 4, I know how to be hungry, I know how to be filled, I know how to be content with lack and with an abundance. Why? Because God has not promised us that we're going to always lack or that we're always going to have an abundance. We just learn to be content in whatever situation we find ourselves. And it comes back to the fact that we have to remember that the Lord is righteous, and he's righteous to us with regard to the promises that he's made to you and I. These are promises that he made to Israel, but he still is a God that remains righteous. And his righteousness is contrasted to those, and we see it in the world all around us. In fact, there are religious people, even people that call themselves Christians and people that go to church or go to churches, and they still take advantage of, as he said, those that are poor, those that are downtrodden, those needy people, and they still take advantage of those. But God remains righteous. And that beautiful contrast to God's character and the character of the wicked. Maybe it gives us a little perspective on his righteousness, and maybe it even speaks to us a little bit about how we should function with some degree of righteousness as God allows us. But with that, we really want you to not focus so much today on what we should be doing, but focusing on Worshiping God with his righteousness. I'm convinced if we take time to think about his righteousness, as that idea of his righteousness permeates us, it affects the way we then function in righteousness. So worship him for his righteousness. The God of the open hand. The God that is generous and the God that is kind. Thank you for joining me today and have a good day in the Lord.